Hello, welcome to another First Chapter Friday. Today we will be hearing from the author of a very popular series on Netflix, 13 Reasons Why. Um, he also wrote this book, which is The Future of Us. And I thought this was a really good book. So I hope you do too. And it is by Jay Asher, also Carolyn Mackler. All right. In 1996, Less than half of all American high school students had ever used the internet. True thing. Facebook would not be invented until several years in the future. Emma and Josh are about to log on to their futures. Sunday. Chapter 1, Emma. I can't break up with Graham today even though I told my friends I'd do it next time I saw him. So instead, I'm hiding in my bedroom, setting up my new computer while he plays Ultimate Frisbee in the park across the street. My dad shipped me the computer as yet another guilt gift. Last summer, before he and my stepmom moved from central Pennsylvania to Florida, he handed me the keys to his old Honda and then started his new life. They just had their first baby, so I got this desktop computer with Windows 95 and a color monitor. I'm scrolling through the various screensavers when someone rings the doorbell. I let my mom answer it because I still haven't decided between a shifting brick wall maze and a web of plumber's pipes. Hopefully it's not Graham at the door. Emma, my mom shouts, Josh is here. No, that's a surprise. Josh Templeton lives next door, and when we were little, we constantly ran back and forth between our houses. We camped in our backyards, we built forts, and on Saturday mornings, he carried over his cereal bowl to watch cartoons on my couch. Even after we got to high school, we hung out all the time. But then, last November, everything changed. We still eat lunch with our small group of friends, but he hasn't been in my house once in the past six months. I select the brick wall screensaver and head downstairs. Josh is standing on the porch, tapping at the doorframe with his scuffed toe of his sneaker. He's a grade behind me, which makes him a sophomore. He's got the same floppy reddish blonde hair and shy smile as always, He's grown five inches this year. I watch my mom's car backing out of the driveway. She honks and waves before turning into the street. Your mom said that you haven't been out of your room all day, Josh says. I'm setting up the computer, I say, avoiding the whole gram issue. It's pretty nice. If your stepmom gets pregnant again, he says, you should talk to your dad into buying you maybe a cell phone. Yeah, right. Before last November, Josh and I wouldn't have been standing awkwardly in the doorway. My mom would have let him in, and he would have jogged straight up to my room. My mom wanted me to bring this over, he says, holding up a CD-ROM. America Online gives you a hundred free hours if you sign up. It came in the mail last week. Our friend Kellen recently got AOL. She squeals every time someone sends her an instant message. She'll spend hours hunched over her keyboard, typing out a conversation with someone who may not even go to Lake Forest High. Doesn't your family want it? I ask. Josh shakes his head. My parents don't want to get the internet. They say it's a waste of time. And my mom thinks the chat rooms are full of perverts. I laugh. So she wants me to have it? Josh shrugs. I told your mom about it, and she said it's okay for you to sign up as long as she and Martin can have email addresses too. I still can't hear Martin's name without rolling my eyes. My mom married him last summer, saying that this time she found true love, but she also said that about Eric, and he only lasted two years. I take the CD-ROM from Josh, and he stuffs his hands in his back pockets. I heard it can take a while to download, he says. Did my mom say how long she'd be gone, I ask. Maybe now would be a good time to tie up the phone line. 
she said she's picking up Martin and they're driving to Pittsburgh to look at sinks. I never bonded with my last stepdad, but at least Eric didn't rip apart the house. Instead, he talked my mom into raising parakeets, so my junior high years were filled with chirping birds. Martin, however, convinced my mom to start a major renovation, filling the house with sawdust and paint fumes. They recently finished the kitchen and the carpets, and now they're tackling the downstairs bathroom. If you want, I say, mainly just to fill the silence, you can come over and try AOL sometime. Josh pushes his hair away from his eyes. Tyson says it's awesome. He says it'll change your life. Right, but he also thinks that every episode of Friends is life-changing. Josh smiles, and then he turns to leave. His head barely clears the wind chimes that Martin hung from the front porch. I can't believe Josh is nearly six feet tall now. Sometimes from a distance, I barely recognize him. I slide in the CD-ROM and listen to it spin inside the computer. I click through the introductory screens and then hit enter to begin the download. The blue status bar on the screen says that the download is going to take 97 minutes. I glance longingly out the window at a perfect May afternoon. After a blustery winter, followed by months of chilly spring rain, summer is finally arriving. I have a track meet tomorrow, but I haven't been running in three days. I know it's stupid to worry about bumping into Graham. Wagner Park is huge. It stretches along the edges of downtown all the way to the newest subdivisions of homes. Graham could be playing Frisbee anywhere. But if he sees me, he'll hitch his arm around my shoulder and steer me somewhere to make out. At prom last weekend, he was all over me. I missed doing the Macarena with Kellen and Ruby and my other friends. I consider interrupting the download to call Graham's house and see if he's home yet. If he answers, I'll hang up. Then again, Kellen told me about a new service where some phones display a number that's called calling. No, I'll be a grown-up about it. I can't hide in my room forever. If I spot Graham in the park, I'll just wave and shout that I have to keep running. I change into shorts and a jog bra and twist my curly hair into a scrunchie. I strap my disc man around my arm with Velcro and then I walk out to my front lawn where I stop to stretch. Josh's garage door opens. A moment later, he rolls out on his skateboard. When he sees me, he stops in the driveway. Did you start the download? Yeah, but it's taking forever. Where are you headed? Skate rats, he says. I need new wheels. Have fun, I say, as he pushes toward the street. There was a time when Josh and I would have talked longer, and that's been a while. I jogged over to the sidewalk, and I take a left. When I get to the end of my block, I cut across and meet the paved trail leading to the park. I push play on my disc man. Callan made this running mix for me, started with Alanis Morissette and then Pearl Jam, and finally Dave Matthews. I run the three-mile loop hard and fast, relieved not to see any Frisbee games. As I'm nearing my street again, the open guitar of Crash Into Me comes on. Lost for you, I mouth the words. I'm so lost for you. The lyrics always make me think of Cody Granger. He's on the track team with me. He's a senior and an incredible sprinter. Ranked in the top 20 in the state, last spring on the ride home from a meet, he sat next to me and he told me all about the college scouts who'd been calling him. Later, when I couldn't hold back a yawn, he let me rest against his shoulder. I closed my eyes and pretended to fall asleep, but I kept thinking, even though I don't believe in true love, I could reconsider that for Cody. Kellen says I'm delusional about him, but she's the one to talk. When she got together with Tyson last summer, you'd think the girl invented love. 
She's got a genius IQ, and she writes all the intense editorials for the school paper, but all she could talk about was Tyson this and Tyson that. When he broke up with her after winter break, she crashed so hard she missed two weeks of school. While I may pine for a Cody, I still have to live my life. For the past two months, I've been going out with Graham, wild. We're in band together. He plays drums and I play saxophone. He's sexy with shoulder length blonde hair, but his clinginess at prom was so annoying. I'll definitely end it with him soon, or maybe I'll just let things dissolve over the summer. The status bar is still chugging along. I take a shower and then settle into my papasan chair to read over my notes for the biology final. I've been getting A's in biology this year. Definitely my strongest subject. Callan has been trying to convince me to sign up with her for a biology course at the college next fall, but I don't think that's gonna happen. I want a low key senior year. When the download is complete, I close my textbook and I restart my computer. As I dial into AOL, the modem crackles and beeps. Once I'm on, I check to see if Emma Nelson at AOL.com is available. But that email address is already taken. So is Emma Marie Nelson. Finally, I settle on Emma Nelson forever. For my password, I consider a few options before typing Millicent. Last summer, when Kellen and Tyson were over each other, Josh and I made fun of them by pretending we were a lovesick middle-aged couple named Millicent and Clarence who devoured Hamburger Helper and drove around town in a beat-up ice cream truck. Kellen and Tyson never thought it was funny, but it sent Josh and me into hysterics. I click enter, and the same AOL screen I've seen on Kellen's computer now appears on mine. Welcome! chimes an electric voice. I'm about to write my first email to Kellen when a bright light flashes across the screen. A small white box with a blue border pops up asking me to re-enter my email and password. Emma Nelson Forever AOL dot com, I type. Melissa. For about 20 seconds, my monitor freezes. Then the white box snaps into a tiny blue dot and a new web page fades in. It has a blue banner running across the top that says Facebook. A column down the center of the screen is labeled News Feed, and under that are tiny photos of people I don't recognize. Each photo is followed by a brief statement. Jason Holt, Loving NYC, I've already eaten two Magnolia cupcakes three hours ago. Like, comment. Kerry Dean, and you didn't share one with me? I want chocolate frosting and sprinkles. Two hours ago. Like. Mandy Reese, I just walked into a spider web and didn't freak out. Woo to the who. 17 hours ago. Like, comment. I circled the mouse around the screen, confused by this jumble of pictures and words. I have no idea what any of this means. Status? and friend request, and poke? And then, just under the blue banner, something makes me shiver. Next to a small picture of a woman sitting on a beach, it says, Emma Nelson Jones. The woman is in her 30s with curly brown hair and brown eyes. My stomach tingles because this woman looks familiar. Two familiar. When I move the mouse over her name, the white arrow turns into a hand. I click and another page slowly loads. This time her picture is larger and there's so much information I don't know where to begin reading. In the center column next to a smaller version of the same picture I see Emma Nelson Jones contemplating highlights. Four hours ago like and comment. It says Emma Nelson Jones went to Lake Forest High School. She's married to someone named Jordan Jones Jr. and was born on July 24th. She doesn't list the year, but 
July 24th is my birthday. I sink my forehead into my hands and attempt to take a deep breath. Through my open window, I hear Josh skating toward his house, his wheels bumping over the lines in the sidewalk. I run down the stairs and I burst out the front door, squinting my eyes into the sun. Josh, I call out. He rides up his driveway and kicks a skateboard in his hands. I clutch the railing of my front porch to steady myself. Something happened after I downloaded AOL. Josh stares at me, the wind chimes ringing through the silence. Can you come upstairs for a second? I ask. He looks down at the grass but doesn't say a word. Please? I say. With his skateboard in his hand, Josh follows me into the house. And then you find out how the two of them have access to the future of them. That's why it's called the future of us. It's very cool. What would you do if you could tap into you in 30 years and if you could make changes in your current life and see the results of those changes in a Facebook page? How cool is that for a premise? Anyways, finish the book and um, have a great week. I will see you next week. And thanks for listening.